Hey guys, welcome back. Yvonne Blasquez here. We're going to be discussing metabolic flexibility today in three ways that we can improve it. Um, okay, so metabolic flexibility has to do with the ability to switch between burning fat and sugar and vice versa. Okay, so metabolic flexibility is the capacity to adapt fuel oxidation to fuel availability. So if someone were to go on a higher carbohydrate diet, they would increase their glucose oxidation, right? And if they were to go on a higher fat diet, they would increase their fat oxidation. So essentially, it's the ability to metabolically be flexible with the fuel that's available and to use it accordingly. All right, so the study that I'm going to use is this one here, uh, which I think is a landmark study. And we're going to look at the schematic. But essentially, as I just said, is that the quote is that the flexibility of muscle to switch between oxidizing fat and glucose is related to insulin sensitivity, percentage of body fat, and fitness, all right? So essentially, these three factors improve metabolic flexibility. So obviously being sensitive to insulin, having a lower body fat or leanness, and then fitness, which is defined as, you know, in this, in this field as the um, VO2 max, the amount of oxygen we can consume per minute, all right? So... Let's start off with fitness. Okay, so fitness is actually predicated on our, how well we can actually burn glucose or carbohydrates. And this is based on rate of energy expenditure or intensity is related to substrate use. Okay, so there's a direct correlation between intensity and the fuel we're using. Higher intensity exercise or activity, we use mainly carbohydrates. Well, guess what? Being faster is strongly connected with being fitter. So think about running. Those who are at the, at the front of the pack who are running a faster pace are fitter. I mean, it, it's, it's quite obvious. Their, their, their ability to use oxygen is, is better. And so this, this is based on why HIT and high-intensity training are so potent and effective. So essentially, when we are better at burning sugar, we also improve our ability to be better at burning fat. All right? So it's like it raises the bar of the ceiling. So everything below goes up, too. So, yeah, we're burning sugar when we're training at a higher intensity, but we also are, be, are going to be better at burning fat, too, and we're going to be better at burning fat when we're not exercising. So the next slide is leanness. All right, guys? Leanness matters uh, because it's a sign of the effectiveness of burning fat. I mean, it's, it's quite obvious. So, and I, as I've said before, I pride myself in being living proof of speaking the truth. And so the last point, guys, I'm going to make, um, so we've touched on fitness, we've touched on leanness. Um, now let's go ahead and touch on diet. So methionine restriction has also been shown to improve metabolic flexibility. And this is fascinating. So this is a dietary regimen that improves, that improves metabolic flexibility. So in this study, dietary methionine restriction is a memetic of chronic dietary restriction in the sense that it increases longevity, but without food restriction. So essentially, guys, restricting methionine is a caloric restriction memetic. Now, it also increases uncoupling protein 1 and adiponectin, which are two favorable substances that are uh, connected to improving our ability to burn fat. Now, the last slide, the plant slant. So how do we go lower methionine? Well, here, a vegan diet is really the most feasible way to lower methionine content. Plant proteins tend to be lower in methionine than animal proteins, and they also are, are, are more dilute, so they have a lower bio, bioavailability. So this is a simple way where one doesn't have to go vegan, but if you go more plant-based, higher plant-based, we're going to inherently lower our methionine content, guys, and this will improve metabolic flexibility, as was shown in that previous study. So with, that, so with that, guys, those are my top three ways to improve metabolic flexibility that are evidence-based. So essentially, we want to get fitter, which actually warrants our ability and, and of how well we burn carbohydrates. We also want to, with that, that'll help, that'll give us a, a better chance of getting leaner. But also, the diet side of it too, going more plant-based, will also help us get leaner with this whole methionine metabolic flexibility connection. All right, so all these things work together, and uh, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, guys. I will go ahead and put those studies down below that I based this video off of, and as always, thank you for watching. Tune in next time.